In this video, I'm going to be talking about the special properties of equilateral triangles, uh, or we could call them equiangular triangles. It does not matter. Um, we're going to start with constructing one, and then I've got three example problems that I'm going to run you through that might be pretty typical for an advanced geometry class. And these are kind of advanced problems, but uh, since I'm going to give hard problems on the homework, I figure I might as well give hard problems on the notes just so you see a few. Uh, first things first, if I want to construct an equilateral triangle, that means that all of the side lengths are the same. Lateral length, equa, equal, right? Equal length sides, all three of them. Um, by nature of what an equilateral triangle is, that means that all the angles inside of the triangle are going to be the same, so we could call it equiangular, equal angles, right? Um, we're going to find out they're all 60 later on, 60, 60, 60. That would be the three angles that add up to 180. To construct an equilateral triangle, I'm simply going to take a compass. I'm going to place the sharp point on one edge. I'm, I'm going to draw my first line. I, obviously, you see I've drawn the base already. I'm going to take a compass. I'm going to place the sharp point on one edge, and I'm going to line up my pencil with the exact end of the opposite edge. Now I'm going to go through. Once I have that correct distance apart, I'm just going to draw a quick arc up here from the left side. I'm going to repeat the process by pushing, putting the sharp point on the right side. I'm not going to change my compass length or size, I'm going to draw the same arc from the right. Where those lines intersect is going to be the third point, the vertex of my triangle. So now I can go through and take a straight edge, and I can draw a line here and a line here, and I have an equilateral triangle. Nice things I know, if I wanted to, I could put a tick mark on all three of those sides, right, because they're all three the same length. I could also put an angle marking in here and show tick marks there and designate that all three of the angles are the same. They're 60 degrees, all three of them. Now that I know that, let's go on and let's solve a couple problems that deal with equilateral triangles. Here's a pretty typical one. If the measure of angle A is equal to 4x minus 20, then what's x? Well, they gave me an angle, but they don't tell me anything about the angles here, right? But if I know that this is an equilateral triangle, then I know by definition that all the angles are the same, which means this must be 60 degrees, right? So they're telling me that 60 degrees is the same thing as 4x minus 20. Let's set them equal to each other. 4x minus 20 is equal to 60, which means that 4x is equal to 80. And if I divide that 4 out, that means x must be a 20. X is 20. That's a pretty simple problem, right? So let's go through. Let's do a more advanced problem. Here we go. In this problem, I'm given a more complicated drawing. It looks like an equilateral triangle. Notice that the angles are the same, and by virtue of the hinge theorem, I know that that means that these sides here are also, these three are also the same, right? I then have an isosceles triangle, it looks like, connected to this equilateral triangle, some different dimensions, and they're asking me what's x and then what's the perimeter of the large triangle A, C, D. Well, the first thing I need to do then is I've got to find a way to figure out what x is, right? But the nice thing is I know that, that this angle is the same as this, which is the same as this, right? They're all the same, and they're all 60 degrees. This 5x must be a 60-degree angle. 5x must be equal to 60, right? So what's x? Well, if I divide out the 5, x is equal to 12. Halfway home. All right. Now, next thing. They say that x is 12. So let's go through and let's fill out the information that we know. This thing here is 60. That means this side down here is 12. That means this side here is 12 plus 3, which is 15, right? That's what I know so far. This has one tick mark. That's an equilateral triangle. That means that's also 12. This is 15 and has two tick marks. That means anything else with two tick marks, this side namely, also has 15 for a distance, for a length. And so if I want the perimeter of this isosceles triangle on the right, I go 15 plus 15 is 30 plus another 12 is 42. The perimeter of that triangle is 42 units. That turned out to be not so bad, right? Last problem, the tough one, okay? I have an equiangular triangle here. 
sign those in because of these tick marks that all three of these angles are 60 degrees. But the nice thing is, is I also know that if all three of these angles are the same, that means the sides are all the same. I can go through and put tick marks here and here and here if I wanted to, right? So if I'm going to solve for A, I don't really have much to go off of other than A squared is the same thing as 42 minus A, right? A squared is the same thing as 42 minus A. And that is a quadratic problem, right? An A squared, an X squared problem. We solve all of these the same way. Step one, let's get this stuff over on the left side with the A squared. So I'm going to subtract, excuse me, I'm going to add A to both sides. I'm going to add A over here. I'm going to subtract 42 from both sides, so I'm going to subtract it over. And after I've done that, I don't have anything left on the right-hand side. So I've just rearranged this equation, right? That is a factoring problem. I need two numbers that add, to multi to add up to positive 1 but multiply to a negative 42. I'm thinking 6 and 7, right? 6 and 7. And it looks like maybe the 7 needs to be the positive one, right? So I can factor this as a plus 7, a minus 6 those are equal to zero. Now, by virtue of the zero product property, I know that this means either a plus seven is equal to zero or a minus six is equal to zero, right? Those are the two ways that that happens. So a could be negative seven or a could be positive six. I really don't know. I can't go any farther, but if I check those values out, if a squared is this side, then if that's negative 7, oh, here, negative 7 or 6, let's fill in that blank, okay? Negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. 42 minus a negative 7 is the same thing as 42 plus 7, which is also 49. Oh, yeah, it's equilateral. They're all the same, aren't they? So that means side SR, which is this blank here, is also going to be... 49. But what if I have a 6? I don't know that it's not 6. If I take 6 and I square it, that makes this 36. 42 minus 6 also gives me 36, doesn't it? That means this left side, SR, is also, it could possibly be 36. So I have multiple answers to this. A could be negative 7, which means the side length is 49. Or A could be 6, which means the side length is 36. And without any kind of information beyond that, I can't really narrow it down. That's the best I can do. So hopefully that makes sense. You've had three videos now for today's class. You've had Hinge Theorem, Isosceles Triangles, Equilateral Triangles. Um, whenever you're done with the notes, bring them up to me and I'll give you your homework.